Hello and welcome to Learn to Drive the Easy Way. I'm approved driving instructor Michael Gambin and I'm going to show you how to drive manual, automatic and cars fitted with disability controls in the easiest way possible. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And remember to hit the subscribe button underneath to see all of our videos. So what we're going to talk about now is multi-lane roundabouts where there are two lanes on the approach. Now we exercise what we call the 12 o'clock rule. Now in this image you can see where the exits are in proportion to where you're coming from. So if you're coming from the bottom of the page effectively from 6 o'clock, if your exit is 12 o'clock or left of 12 o'clock you need to be in the left lane on the approach and if your exit is right of 12 o'clock but not including 12 o'clock you need to be in the right lane on the approach. Take note though that if the road markings or signs do tell you to do something different, then do what the road markings are telling you. And this is important to remember on your test. Again, if you do go the wrong direction, it is not an issue. So if you do find that you're in the left lane to go straight, which would be traditionally the correct thing, but the road markings then state it's a left turn only lane, then mirror mirror left signal and turn left is not an issue at all the examiner will redirect you and it's not even a driver fault if you were to go straight from that position it would be an automatic fail so if you're going left or straight we need to be in the left lane on the approach and we maintain that lane position so we're not basically cutting people up on the right hand side that could be there and you'll see that in the video shortly if you're turning right of 12 o'clock, then we need to be in the right lane on the approach, but we maintain that right lane as we go round. So I'm going to show you how that's done now. Okay, so the roundabout that we are approaching now has got two lanes on the approach. So we're going to go straight across and the exit is 12 o'clock. So on this approach, I want to be in the left lane for that exit. So. I'm not going to signal because I'm going straight, but I want to get my position nice and early. So I'm checking my mirrors and I'm now going to just hold this left lane on the approach. Now I'm already looking opposite for any potential blockers. So I can see that there isn't anyone on the roundabout at the moment. So it gives me a bit more of a chance to be able to make this move to go. Now I can see that there's nothing from my right, so I can proceed. Now I'm going to maintain my left position as I go here. And the reason for that is if I do cut into that right lane, that white car now will be of an issue. And you can see because they're in the incorrect lane, it then causes that problem. So it's really important that you maintain your lane position throughout the double lane roundabout to avoid that problem, but to keep checking that right mirror just to see if you do have anyone doing something like that. This time I'm going to be turning right, third exit. Now we know it's right of 12 o'clock, so rear view right mirror, right signal and staying in the right lane. I'm looking to the right, I can see that I've got a cyclist, but it's far enough away that I can go. So I've got into third gear here because it's a larger roundabout. Now I'm keeping to my right lane here, I'm sticking to it like glue. I'm checking my left mirror, left mirror again, left signal, left mirror again, and again. So you can see I'm really checking that left edge just to make sure that there is absolutely no risk of someone being on my outside that I need to be aware of. So on the approach we are going to go straight across, second exit. Now we can see on the sign here that straight Barnet is the left lane for the 12 o'clock position. So I'm going into that position and I'm already looking on the approach. Now at the moment I can see there's a white car approaching but it doesn't have an indicator on. On top of that it's in the left lane so it gives me a bit more of a prompt that they're going to be taking the exit. At this point I do my left indicator and I'm just checking my right mirror as well just to make sure that there isn't anyone that's going to try to go past in the right hand side. So here I'm going to follow the signs for the A10 south towards C London. So I'm turning right and it's the third main exit and we can see A10 south on the floor. Now on the approach the traffic light's gone green 
and I want to signal as well to tell people where I'm going. Now all I need to do is keep the white line on my left on my left and then the white line that appears on the right on my right. So I'm going to stay now in this lane. So you can see I've gone from lane four effectively into now lane three. I've moved across one lane because I've gone past one exit. I'm checking my mirrors as I'm pulling away. I'm keeping in between the lines and you can now see I'm in lane two. Now, which lane do we always want to be in? We always want to be in the furthest most left lane. So I'm checking my left mirror and as soon as I'm happy it's safe to move across, I will then move across but keep updating with that left mirror. So all you have to do is stay in your lane if it's a spiral roundabout like that one. So I'm going straight across this time. Now, I'm following signs for A406 West, which is on the floor here. So I'm gonna stay in this lane. There's four lanes here, so the chances are the left lane's going to be for left turn only. But I'm gonna keep checking that left mirror. I can see there's a white van there, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. The traffic light's red, so I'm already braking. I'm going into first gear, now back into second, because the scenario has changed. Now, I'm keeping to the left as much as I can whilst checking my right mirror, just to make sure that there's no one coming up on my outside. So now we're going to talk about two complex types of roundabout, but before that, I just want to specify something when it comes to controlled roundabouts, so anything that has traffic lights. Now, something that fouls a lot of people on their driving test is that they'll see a green traffic light on the approach and they'll go, but they don't acknowledge that that traffic light is actually a pedestrian crossing and not controlling the roundabout, like in this picture here. You can see that there is a give way sign and a give way line on the floor as well. So that shows that the traffic lights control the pedestrian crossing, but not the roundabout. So be very, very careful on the approach. If there is just a stop line, yes, the traffic light is controlling the roundabout. You tend to also have a traffic light actually on the roundabout facing you. Whereas if it's a pedestrian crossing, remember you'll have zigzag markings on the floor before it. You'll have normally two or three traffic lights on the actual crossing itself you won't have one on the roundabout and then you'll have the give way line or the give way sign on the side of the road as well now the two types of complex roundabouts the first one is the double roundabouts now this is two mini roundabouts which are touching one another you treat it as two separate roundabouts so say in this picture here if there was someone coming from your right hand side turning right Yes, you would have to give way to them. But if there wasn't, you could go up to the next roundabout and give way to a vehicle coming from the opposite direction, which is turning right. There is nothing wrong with you stopping on that roundabout. The next type of roundabout is the magic roundabout. Now there's not many of these across the UK, but there are a few dotted around. Magic roundabouts is a circular configuration of mini roundabouts, like in this picture. Now, if you are turning towards St Albans, you could go all the way around in a clockwise direction, but you don't need to. It's bi-directional. So you can turn right at the first roundabout, left at the second roundabout, and then right at the third roundabout. So you would take the most direct route. But if you could see there was traffic, roadworks, or an accident, and that would cause that direction to be basically taking you longer, you can go the opposite direction. Yes, it takes longer in distance, but it may be quicker in time. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Just make sure that you're using your signals correctly. I hope this video has helped and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And remember to put any comments for any questions that you have in the section below.